This hey is there. my partner, Dr. Amir Abdul Jabbar. Come, come around, Jerry. Come around. You got to be on camera. So he's in the lab and he's going to show us what, Amir? So we are here with Stryker. Um, go ahead and come on up. Um, I want to thank you for your support. And, uh, you know, we're, we're demonstrating this system, which is a fenestrated screw system. I don't know if you want to zoom in. I always think it's important to know your implants. Um, so this is a system where we've got six holes here at the tip. They'll all have a, a slightly different arrangement of the amount of holes and how far back. I think this is important to know because if you are long with your screws, you don't want to have cement extravasating out the front. Um, you know, these are the six holes where we want our cement to be. Uh, again, as you guys mentioned, just to reinforce the strength of the screw to prevent pullout. Uh, this system here, uh, why don't you tell us how many cc's we get because this is, uh, this will fill with cement. And, um, you know, this is our application device. It fits right onto the top of our screw here. And uh, you have to be very controlled as you um, deliver the cement. So tell us a little bit more. This system has uh, 12 cc's of usable cement, is ready to go in about a minute. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. 12, 12 cc's of usable cement, ready to go in about a minute. And then you have 20. We don't have a microphone. He needs to talk in the microphone. 20 minute Amir. working time. That's impressive. All right. Mike, so, um, Amir, we couldn't we'll hear that. We didn't have a microphone here. on. Uh, Jared, my assistant, Jared Cook, you've probably seen him with us before. Not with us much longer, we'll be very sad to see you go. Um, so we've pre-instrumented the spine here. Um, if you want to pop up one of our uh, floral images, um, we can take a new shot. And go ahead and start mixing that cement if you would. You so guys tell have us floral available? You're mixing the cement right now. So this is, just to be so, clear, PMMA, um, right? Will now get that cement going for you again. Um, Making sure screw placement is definitely something that I, I think is important. Um, and you know, we will we'll see it live. If there's any lateral um, placement of the screw, you can have lateral extravasation. Obviously, we worry about embolization of that cement if it's, if it's very liquid, uh, making sure that the cement is at the right uh, consistency. So we'll uh, just give it just a second. Um, and then also the system here can, um, you show us the inserter that actually goes into the tube. So here is our, um, this will attach to this piece. And so we want to get that cement directly into the screw itself. Um, so making sure that you have a very firm attachment to the actual screw so you're not getting the, the screw coming back out and extravasating. So this will fit directly down into the, got a percutaneous screw system here, but this works for open as well. So this needs to go all the way down into the screw so that you're getting your cement applied directly down into it. Hey, Amir, can you hear us? So let us know when you're ready with the cement and we will uh, get started. Uh, one of the things that I do like to do is um, Sometimes I will use these at the very top and the bottom of the construct. So um, if we need several applicators, we'll have one of our fellows working at the top of the construct and I'll be working at the bottom so that we have very clear visualization of uh, what is happening at each level. So I'm gonna go ahead and get you started here. All right. And so give us a, a shot on the lateral, all right? And so, um, again, how many twists per cc? We want to go for about 1.5 cc's per screw. They can't hear me. Three full turns is what I'm hearing. So first, we're got, we've got to prime this. And again, that's something you want to keep using your floral for. So give us a shot. OK, we're already getting that. Um, coming out, so how many are you at? How many turns, Good. Probably two. Two, one more. All right, shot. Great, and so that to me looks like plenty of cement. We'll go to our next screw. And uh, I do like to do this, we're kind of gonna stagger so that we can make sure we've got our best visualization. All right, go ahead, we're at our bottom screw now, give us a shot, okay. Another shot, and again, 
nice and slow so that um, if we start to see extravasation, we're able to stop, shot. Again, that looks great. And I'm gonna come to my right-sided screw. All right, go ahead. Hey, Amir, can you hear us? Amir, yes. can you hear us? Yes. How, how much pressure do you have to exert and how is this cement different in its viscosity than regular PMMA? Can you just uh, elaborate on that? Yeah, so um, I'm told that this is higher viscosity again because we don't want to have that extravasation um, of your typical. Um, so it is a higher viscosity. And again, I would always check it. So um, why don't you zoom in um, so you can see this coming out here. I would I recommend you always actually check how that cement looks and feels before you put it in. If it's too liquidy, um, I think it's higher risk for extravasation. So you always want to make sure that you like what you're seeing before you uh, place that cement. And how many cc's for each screw again, just for me who's slow on the uptake? You said it before, but just... 1.5. I think 1.5 is, is a, a good amount that I feel like gives me enough fill. Go ahead, shot. Um, and is going to give us that actual purchase strength without um, overdoing it. Okay, shot again. All right. And so, um, again, if you're more concerned about the bone quality, you can go pulse live fluoro. We're minimizing our radiation here and just taking a few shots, but that looks like very good fill to me. We'll come to an AP. Do you put these screws in differently, like more convergent into the middle of the vertebral body uh, to avoid uh, spillage laterally, or uh, is there some uh, change in your screw placement technique? Um, I think, you know, if you have an ideally placed screw, it shouldn't matter, um, but you do want to err on the side of medialization versus lateral because uh, it's very easy for this to come out. And as we, as we see here, we've got cement over here on that... Uh, lateral aspect of the screw. Um, so that's probably has a lateral breach. And again, that was very hard to see from the lateral. So if you're concerned, and we did mention this ahead of time, um, you can, it's not a, a bad extravasation, um, but it's something that is very common with this type of screw. So we were considering replacing this, but I think it's a very good, um, you know, way of showing that you can have a very small lateral breach and the, and the screw is gonna to go to the path of least resistance. So we've got three very well-filled um, uh, screw perches here. This one, um, if you would have seen that happening on the AP, you just stop where it is. And uh, you know, again, this little bit of extravasation I don't think is gonna harm the patient, uh, but you would, would definitely wanna stop if you saw that happening. So um, I think this is a very good um, demonstration of how, how that can happen and how you have to be very, very um, conscientious when you're placing these screws. Ben, can you hear me? Yep. A couple of quick questions. One is this particular setup that you're using, uh, I noticed that you keep your hand on the blue uh, twisty thing right there. Mm -hmm. And I think that is important because sometimes what happens is as you inject the cement, the cement pull, push the needle backward. Uh, so you gotta make sure, so I don't know if there's a way to lock yeah, this thing this into the people's screw. Yeah. yeah, so there, there is a locking mechanism. Okay. Again, I don't know that I 100% trust that, so that's why I'm, I'm keeping my hand there just to make sure yeah. that it's staying in place. Um, but there, this one does have a locking mechanism that uh, allows to actually hold onto the top of the screw and keep it in position. Yeah, that's important because obviously you don't want to get your hand radiated while you're doing it. And sometimes if it doesn't get locked, then again, the cement can push the needle backward. Um, and then you get cement into the air uh, through the screw. The other thing that I find it's helpful is that when you inject the screws, uh, fishtail the fluoroscopy just a little bit as you finish injecting the first screw because as you're injecting the second screw, you don't see the cement as well because it's covered by this cement that came out from through the first screw. So if you can fishtail it and see the other screw uh, a little bit off kilt on the lateral, then you can see exactly when the cement comes out and get better idea what the cement is. Otherwise, the first screw cement obstructs your lateral view for the second injection. Exactly. I think that that's a very great point. And, um, 
you know, we it can be challenging to see regardless, but that, that can definitely improve your visualization. And the cement sometimes go behind the screw itself. And so that's what we're talking about, the one and a half cc's. You just got to pay attention to it because it's very easily that the cement as it comes out, just kind of go right around the screw and you don't see it as well. So you got to pay attention to that. Those are great points. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Um, I think that's, uh, again, these are, these are very, very helpful implants. Um, makes the time a little bit shorter versus trying to pre-cement the vertebral body. Um, does add extra cost to your case, so things to be aware of um, You know, when you're talking about using these implants at your institution. I thought this was actually really well done and that AP image that shows a lateral extravasation as undesirable as it is in vivo, this is the ideal time to show this and discuss that this is a known complication and again having the screws if at all a little bit medial and making sure that you have only one pass with your screws and not multiple passes. I think those are important points and yes there's a significant cost differential to consider. Um, are you aware of actual biomechanics studies? I asked Dr. Laufer that before that compare these fenestrated screws to pre-cemented screws where we usually use two cc's per screw tract? Uh, go ahead. Oh. Please. Uh, I'm sorry, the other you uh, asked me. Um, uh, there were a couple of studies, uh, I think they were cadaveric, uh, that showed that the screw pullout strength was better for cement augmented screws. Um, uh, cement augmented and they're expandable screws as well. So I think on cadaveric studies, they were, uh, it's from a long time ago. I'm not sure it's been revisited. Yeah. Um, you know, experience wise, I've never seen a cement augmented screw with even a little bit of cement ever pull out, I have to say. I, I've never seen it loosen. I've seen it fracture. Uh, I've seen the rod fracture, but I've never seen the cement uh, augmented screw pull out or loosen. That's a great comment, Dr. Laufren. I actually just had a fracture in a cement augmented screw below a construct, uh, so uh, I hadn't seen that until just uh, recently either. But yeah, great points. Dr. Mandel, any other comments in closing? Otherwise, we have the Great, Dr. Bilski, to go ahead. Yeah, let's just move on because we are running behind already. 